and Eve saying, oh, our God is so good. And I was like, wait a minute. Maybe God's not good. So Eve's response, verse 2, the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. And it's just going to keep sliding. Not only are they being ashamed of their bodies, um, and by the way, it, there's still that today. How many, how many couples actually um, would be comfortable, how many wives would be comfortable walking buck naked across the bedroom in front of their husband? Or is there always this built-in sense of, i got to put something on? You know, that something isn't quite right even today. Uh, verse 8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. So apparently the Lord took on a form that allowed him to come visit with them and talk with them. And he's walking in the garden, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called out to the man, where are you? What's broken now? How does this show that Adam and Eve aren't thinking straight either anymore? <coughs> yeah, God is scary. That, that's not true. shouldn't be true. Look at this universe God made. It was perfect. All for me. But now he's my enemy? Really? And what do they think they can do? Yeah. I commanded the universe into existence by a word, and now my cute little creature down there thinks he can hide from me? Like, hide behind a tree or something? Are you kidding me? So their, their noggin isn't working. Their heart's not working. <coughs> their mind isn't working. It's flawed. So the Lord God calls to the man, Where are you? And by the way, why would a parent... Why would God ever say, where are you, if God, <coughs> if God knows where he is? Because God knows everything. Why would he say, where are you? Or have you ever done this as a parent? Um, when the kids come home from school and you say, how was your day? And the kids say, fine. And you say, really? Oh. What happened at recess? Nothing. Oh, during kickball? Nothing. Oh, so you didn't get mad and trip someone on the playground? Oh, yeah. Right? Um, God is giving an opportunity for them to come clean and be honest. But now let's look at what the hearts and minds of Adam and Eve do. God says, where are you? And he answers, well, I heard you in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. So God, you're the bad guy, and I have to hide from you. And he said, 11... Who told you that you were naked? Have, I, have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? That's a yes or no question, isn't it? Did you eat from the tree? And by the way, does God know the answer? So whose benefit is he asking the question for? The child. Did you take a cookie from the cookie jar? And when you know they did take a cookie from the cookie jar... What you're really hoping is for that little tear to come into their eye and say, yes, Mom, I did. Yes, Dad, I did. And for you to say, okay, bring it in. Because we're going to hug this one out, right? But when you, when you say, did you eat from the cookie jar? And they look you in the eyeball and say, no. Or he did. It, it kind of breaks your heart, right? Because you're, you're approaching to restore the relationship. And they're just putting up walls. So look at the wall that Adam puts up. Verse 12. He says, The woman that you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Is that a commandment? So he could do this. He has to be able to die so that he can destroy the devil. Um, now, Psalm 49 tells us why Kyle cannot be the Savior. Here's why. No man can redeem the life of another or give God a ransom for him. The ransom for a life is costly. No payment's never enough. Are you worth enough to pay for, for the life, the sins of everybody else in the world? The answer is no. We could crucify you, and it would do Eric no good. 
you'd just die, and it wouldn't do anybody any good because you're just you. You're, you're just a guy. But what if instead of putting you on the cross, what if we put the divine being on the cross instead and we kill him and his blood drips and he gasps and screams in pain and he suffers and we say, what's that worth? Is that worth anything? You say, that's worth a lot. Who, who could ever even count how much the blood of Jesus God's Son is worth? And yet, there it is on the cross for us. So. Oh my God, he's an extraordinary guy. Watch